Hi, I'm Andrew. And I'm Dora. And we're Mr. and Mrs. K. We're a couple from New York that started this channel in 2021 to share our travel, food, and experiences. Follow us as we find new, interesting, and exciting things along the way. Boop, boop. Alright folks, so it's now like 4 a.m. We're about to head out to the airport because we're heading to San Diego and LA. SoCal yes. basically. Yep. And we will be traveling with Waffle for the first time, so we gotta get to the airport early. Yeah, because uh, we don't know the exact procedures and we gotta figure out, well we gotta check in and we got luggage to check in and just figure out everything out with Waffle. Maybe hopefully he can make it. I think we sh he should be good, but. I think he should be good, he's small enough. But typically when you bring a dog, they will ask you to check in at the counter. So I didn't check in online this time. Yeah, but uh, let's head out. This is officially our first trip with Waffle and there was actually a lot to prepare for. The first thing that we had to do when booking our trip and deciding to bring Waffle was to call Delta and let them know that we were bringing a pet or a dog. Uh, I spoke to a representative and she had informed me that uh, this particular flight only allowed four animals or pets on board and she told me about the different procedures and policies and stuff. Another thing was that we weren't able to bring him out of the carrier, so he had to be in the carrier the whole time. Uh, even, even if he had to pee or anything, he, he wouldn't be able to come out, and that's what she told us. So we we're flying from New York to Los Angeles, which is about a six hour flight. So we really had to make sure that Waffle was able to really hold in his pee or poop. <laughs> yeah, which Waffle is actually pretty good at holding his potties. Yeah. Yeah. And another thing that she asked was the measurement of the carrier that we had. We hit there because according to Delta, the measurements were, I think, 18, 18 and 11. I mean, we'll put it down here, but each, each airline definitely has like a different uh, requirements. So what we did was we purchased a couple of different bags or carriers so that we were able to kind of make sure uh, the carrier fit the measurement requirements because we just <clears throat> didn't know. Yeah, and the first one we bought was this, you know. And it was slightly bigger than what's required. So then we had to purchase in a very short time, time frame. frame. We um, gladly have Amazon Prime, so we're able to find um, the one that we currently use, which is the Shepherd. Sherpa. Sherpa um, brand is very sturdy and it fits the dimension that Delta required. Yeah. We got it like a week before, maybe a little less than that. Right. And what we really wanted to do was get him used to the carrier, which surprisingly he got pretty used to like pretty, it was pretty quickly. Cool. I think it's nice because the Sherpa one has the top open as well. Yeah. So he was a little bit comfortable at first. And I have to say the one that we returned, I'm really glad that we made that decision because with the Sherpa, it just barely fit. Yeah. The under the seat, yeah. And then the other one was that we bought previously, that was taller. Taller, right. Yeah. I think Waffle definitely seems a little bit more comfortable in a bigger one. Obviously, it's a bigger carrier, but I think that would probably create a lot of uncertainties with that larger one, especially how strict the um, airlines are right now. Um, Delta was a little bit easier in a way that on the website it didn't say that your pad has to stand up. It just it has to move around, able to move around in a bag. Yeah, so some, again, different airlines have different requirements and guidelines. So definitely check out their website to see what their guidelines are. Right. Because again, they're all different. So the representative gave us some other um, information like how much the pricing would be which was $95 one way and where to go the day of the flight because you don't check in in the normal queue. It's a different line. 
and surprisingly it was like a short much shorter line right. too which is pretty because nice because nowadays most people do self-checking yeah. so the regular lines where you do a self-checking and you drop off your back to check or checking your back and then where we went was like actual human Check representative yeah. check-in and there was no nobody there so i mean the overall process for talking to a representative was pretty simple i'm not sure if it's just delta but i thought the the whole process was was very seamless and simple i think the the worst part of that call was probably just waiting for a representative which took maybe 20 30 minutes it's fairly long but other than that she was super nice and respectful gave me all the uh right information and I definitely had a positive experience with them. So there was a few things that we had to prep uh, as far as products and things uh, for this trip. And Just like how we pack our own daily use and stuff, <laughs> we gotta pack like waffles for daily. Waffles, yeah. And there was a lot that we didn't really think about until we really did our research and sat down and thought, okay, how do we do certain things? Right. Because he still is a puppy and we're still kind of in training mode. So there were some things like the playpen where he kind of needs his own space. That was something that we really needed to get. And thank God we were able to find a, uh, a portable, portable foldable playpen yeah. where like he kind of gets his own space. Yeah. You can check out it over here. Mm -hmm. um, we really enjoyed it. And I think it's just so convenient to carry it with us and, and create that type of space for Waffle. Yeah, and it's really convenient it's really nice because we're able to not just use it for this trip, but just use it daily. Like when we go maybe to like the park or something, he'll have his own kind of space for him to, to kind of roam around. Mm -hmm. And, and I, sometimes you just don't have that luxury to keep eye on the puppy. Yeah. And this just comes very handy. For sure. Yeah. So I definitely recommend that just to just for any dog owners, you know, just if you're not traveling, yeah. just have it. So the next thing that we had to bring were his obviously his food and treats. So we have nice like his treats here yeah and then we pack up like a, a week's worth a week worth of food here yep we definitely enjoyed this water bottle it's we actually see a lot of people using the same like exactly the same one mm -hmm. because you can like i don't know you can push this button right here and then the water will come out so you're not wasting all the water yeah i realize that some if you just carry a bowl with a water bottle there's sometimes like he just doesn't drink it yeah um, and it just kind of end up carry it. yeah you just like carry a water it. a bowl of water and it's one like you can really you want you can really like put a water kind of back <laughs> yeah so it's really convenient so this is really convenient next we also bought a backpack, backpack. so we have this bag where <laughs> we kind of carry him in when and he gets tired, head will like yeah, his head will stick out of here, and he would. Right. I think he would sit. I don't know the exact position. I don't know yeah, I hope he's comfortable in here. He seems to be comfortable because because he always sleeps, sleeps in here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's pretty convenient just because we can carry him if he's tired or yeah. if we or if it's just not convenient for us to to walk him or you know have him or walk around. Uh, we just put him in a bag. Yeah, and it's just easier because you're hand free because you carry him, you can carry him in the front or on the back. Mm -hmm. We certainly do get a lot of attention when Waffle is in this bag. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, he gets attention in general. Yeah. So it's it's pretty funny because you see this because no one, everyone thinks it's, he's kind of like a toy because right. he actually looks like a toy, a like, toy a like, like a stuffed animal. Like a stuffed animal. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's pretty funny. And the next must-have thing, when I, I don't think it's just for travel, it's just kind of everyday thing. You need to have a harness and a leash. Yeah, I mean, right. especially a lot of the places that we go to, they probably require leashes. And yeah, um, definitely make sure to bring the poop bag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that these are kind of no-brainers. Not even just for travel. They're just, yeah, it's just everyday. This is like everyday thing. things. Uh, also, the bowls. I mean, that's a pretty. Right, this one. one's a collapsible. I mean, there's yeah. nothing special. You can get it anywhere. Mm -hmm. But for travel-wise, it's just a lot easier to fit in the bag. Yeah. Um, his regular bowl is just too bulky. Mm -hmm. And I might have gone a little bit too extra. I did bring his pee pad. Yeah. And then next, obviously, the his toys. I mean, Wubba. Wubba, he likes his Wubba. There's a few uh, other bones around here uh, yeah. that he likes as well, just to keep him occupied. Yeah. And for his hygiene, 
We do have his toothbrush and, and toothpaste. toothpaste. And there's also, we also have the, um, like we brought shampoo, his normal shampoo yeah. that we use to, to kind of clean him up yeah. with. And then that kind of leads into like the, wipe. the wipes. So that's kind of necessary, I guess. I mean, yeah, it's our go-to hygiene cleaning. Yeah. Packet. Yep. So those are kind of like the main things that we brought with us to for Waffle, just so he has everything to feel comfortable and and for us to kind of uh, help him also. Yeah. So after we checked in, uh, we went to the security checkpoint, and that was an interesting experience. Kind of interesting. It was different. It was just yeah, I missed it completely. Yeah. It was. It was very <laughs> simple. Also. I don't know if it was just this JFK and, and this terminal, but what I had to do was I put everything I would normally do. I would take my shoes off, put the stuff in the, in the bins, whatever. And then next I would take care of Waffle. I would hold Waffle. His kennel would go into the bin and through the uh, x-rays, but I would hold Waffle and I would go through the, like on the, side. the side, like, security point not the ones that the new ones that where you go up but the side the old ones and then uh at the end of it the guy would check my hands and that's it i don't think he checked waffle and that was pretty much it again it was really simple it was really quick for sure yeah i definitely it was a little bit worry after seeing some like tiktok or shorts that some dog just like ran off during the yeah, yeah. <laughs> because you do have to to take him out of the kennel right so we were, i was worried yeah we didn't know what to expect but yeah. i mean I, again it could just be jfk terminal 4 with delta but our experience it was very simple it was very simple but very very smooth yeah so we were able to make it through uh security with waffle it was actually pretty like simple and quick uh, so now we're actually going to go to the pet relief station to see if he needs to go potty or anything like that. And then we'll head to the, uh, the lounge. Papa, say hi. <laughs> now we get to the onboard experience. So again, we are flying from JFK to LAX, which again is a six hour flight. That's a pretty long flight, mm -hmm. especially because this is his first ever flight. Right. Uh, we just dived right in. <laughs> we didn't even take it slow, like one or two hours, but yeah, we went directly six hours. Yeah, I guess it can be longer than that in the US. So yeah. it's, it's wilder than Hawaii. Right. <laughs> right. We got pretty lucky with Waffle because Waffle can actually hold in his pee for a for long, long time. time. I think when we first got Waffle, he was able to hold his peas and poops. Like throughout the night. Throughout the night. And that's already, that's at least six hours. Six hours, hours. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, we're pretty grateful. <laughs> I don't know, again, it, it might not be the same for you, but for us, we were. it was pretty quick and pretty simple. Yeah. This is where we will recommend you to bring a few pee pads with you. For one, you know, for the dogs that don't really hold um, their peas for that long, you can at least relieve it on the pee pad and you can put it inside the kennel. Yeah. Um, another thing is that um, airports does have pet relief area, so you can actually um, have them go to the bathroom before you board the plane. But um, the one in JFK is kind of Gross. yucky. <laughs> So then um, we did lay down a pee pad for waffle inside the pet relief area. It's a very, it's like so smelly in there. Yeah. But then I think waffle didn't like it either. So we just yeah. kind of forget forgot it. about it. We're like, um, let's move on. Right. And then we were thinking worst case, we'll have waffle peeing his kennel with the pee pad on. Yeah. But he actually hold it yeah. entire thorough. I'm impressed. Yeah. Um, well, onboarding the plane, so that's where the size of the kennel already matters. So we took, uh, we travel, we're traveling with three. Um, so we took the middle aisle. Middle the trunk. Three, middle trunk yeah, of the Yeah, so it was a seat. two, three, two configuration. Right. So then um, the, the kennel kind of, you can't really like just put them in. You have you to slide, slide them in. into from the side because it's wider, like below the seats a little bit, so you can slide them in. So again, he was only able to stay in his kennel the whole time. Um, what we did was throughout the plane ride, we gave him like his toys and bully sticks. We wouldn't give it to him like all at once. 
we would kind of give it in gradually, increments, yeah, gradually yeah. like just yeah. give them these like toys and, and bully sticks and treats and stuff just to kind of like keep him occupied throughout the trip but for the most part he did pretty well he didn't mm. bark or anything or whine right. he, well he did whine a little bit when the plane was taking off and then also landing landing yeah i, I think it's just like the, the cabin the pressure, air pressure. Yeah, the air right. pressure it kind of, kind of bothered his ears or something maybe once we touched down to lax uh, the first thing we did immediately was go to the uh, pet relief, relief area, area yeah. which, similar to JFK, it was kind of smelly. I thought it was actually much better. It, okay, it, was, it was much so better. much brighter yeah, 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 yeah. at first. The one at JFK it was it just, just seemed like it almost looked, looked like a it was like I don't saw know. like a movie like, <laughs> like a scene like in a saw horror, yeah like a bathroom. horror movie or something whatever. Yeah. But LAX was much brighter, much nicer, still a little smelly. Same thing, we laid down a pee pad, pee pad and it, to avoid that gross contact. Yeah, and Waffle pretty much filled up the pee pad. <laughs> I mean, he's holding his pee for six hours, so yeah, it was like it was like down the pee pad, Waffle down the pee pad, and it would just, just like go right away. Yeah, it was, it, it was, completely we didn't even soaked. need to cue him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he already knew what to do. This trip was a domestic trip, so there weren't paperwork for us to really fill out, it was very simple. If it's an international, I'm sure there's like it'd be a lot more complicated depending on the country that we're going to. But luckily, we're in we're within the U.S., so it was pretty simple. And thank God. <laughs> <laughs> Another consideration that we had to um, think about was the our accommodation. So like the Airbnb that we're staying at, or even hotels, they had to be able to accept dogs and pet friendly uh, Airbnbs. When we were looking up accommodations this is one thing that we kind of forgot about but we once we realized we're like oh okay we got to think about this and luckily airbnb was really good they have a filter for dog friendly uh right places which i was very gladly to see there actually a lot of airbnb owners are open to Accepting, pets. yeah yeah i think one of our one of the places that we stay at they have a fee for a dog, I think. That's yeah, per day. it was just normal. I think some Airbnb owners would charge uh, slightly more per day for a pet. Mm -hmm. um, the fees can can vary depending on how they choose to to accept it. Yeah, but for the most part, Airbnbs are pretty good. Mm -hmm. I think hotels probably would have options. If you have a service dog, it's a different story. Yeah. Um, but if you just have a pet, just make sure you call them. Make sure. Um, they could allow. Mm -hmm. So yeah. definitely do your research. Mm -hmm. Luckily, California is pretty accepting of dogs and just there are pet friendly shops and restaurants everywhere. And there's a lot of outdoor seating as well. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's just the space that they have. Mm -hmm. So California is pretty good with it. Um, a lot, there was a lot of restaurants that, that did take in dogs and we're super grateful for that. Most likely, if, you, if they have a outdoor seating, they will be a little bit more pet friendly. Yeah, I think that's that's a rule of thumb. Mm -hmm. I think definitely, and definitely. That's okay. California, obviously, given all the spaces, they have a pretty <laughs> decent outdoor space. Yeah, but don't assume because there were some restaurants that we went to in LA and in San Diego where they didn't exactly allow pets. Um, so definitely call ahead or even check Yelp because I think Yelp has a feature where they say like if dogs are allowed. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty convenient. And also same thing like same thing goes for beaches and parks. Uh, there are designated like park, uh, dog parks and dog beaches in some of these areas. But again, not all of them are accepting of dogs. And if they do, you have to have a leash. And that's that's kind of that's so definitely bring that leash mm -hmm. and the bag too. and the bag yeah because well some places actually do allow dogs if they're in the bag mm -hmm. so definitely give them a call just to see and same thing with the parks because worst case scenario it just won't go or just put them in the bag and leave them in the bag luckily waffle's small enough to, to travel with so mm -hmm. that's convenient after this trip we do have some tips we would like to share one thing would kind of be the so definitely the, call ahead or plan ahead to do your research yeah um, because in some places that you used to go without a pet it might turn out to be a very different experience the moral of the story here is just planning ahead and doing your research because that was the biggest difference in traveling with Waffle was that we did a lot more planning and research as far as calling restaurants, making sure the plane could take Waffle uh, and what products we need, what do we need to, to have him 
stay happy? Yeah, we did have to change some plans, uh, make some itinerary changes as a certain parks and gardens don't really allow dogs, even though if they're carrying a bag. Um, so definitely plan ahead is the biggest tip here. And one thing that we failed to bring or do was he snuggle like Aww. Waffles' little buddy. Uh, I think he misses him. I think so too. <laughs> uh, he, he doesn't have like a friend to like, kind of play with like, this little <laughs> toy. He really likes to like play around with him. But uh, we intended to bring him, we just forgot. Uh, I guess we just forgot to play, uh, part yeah. pack him. Another thing we would have bring, uh, now we know, is I think dogs do get ear, ear pressure as well. So we might get him a ear muff next time. Oh yeah, the covers, I think we've seen them like on Amazon and stuff. Yeah, but, they look pretty funny. Yeah, I don't know if he's, it'll bother him, but regardless, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely try it out. So traveling with a puppy like Waffle was definitely a lot of fun and a lot more energy needed during the trip as well. Domestically speaking, I think it's a little bit easier. There's not a lot of paperwork. Um, you know, I think majority of the, the country do accept pet. Yeah, it's really um, reliant on the, um, the, the airlines. Airlines, Yeah, that's the right. big, uh, big factor. Um, internationally, it's a different story. There's Definitely a lot more planning needed, a lot more paperwork, yep. a lot more strict. So hopefully one day we can take Waffle internationally. Yeah, I think that's that's the goal. <laughs> but overall, this is a very good experience and one that we really enjoyed and hopefully we'll be able to take him on more trips, not just like road trips, but like airplane trips and, and stuff, just to take him around because we, we really like having Waffle around and it's fun to see uh, he, him experience all these kind of things. We definitely hope that this video helped you out as far as preparing and what to bring and just what, what to, to expect. expect. Yeah. Right. If you guys have any uh, tips and trips that you would like to share, please comment down below. We will take in any suggestions needed to help yeah. out our experience. Yep. So if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to share <laughs> and subscribe. We release videos every week. See you next week. Bye.